If you were to take a photograph or a snapshot of today's chapter in Numbers, number 33, uh, you would most likely need to take a whole lot of little photographs because Numbers 33 is a reflection on the journey that begins with the Exodus and ends up looking over the hill, as it were, or over the, the crest of the hill into the Promised Land. And nearly every other verse has the words, they left, they left, they left. It's a kind of a looking back in the rear view mirror, as it were, and uh, uh, taking these lots of little photographs of these places. The story could be summed up in what I have left behind. And I thought it was a bit of a sad way as I read the chapter and thought, you know, isn't it sad to think of life as like that? Recently, Joan was sorting out photographs that, uh, that we have had, like so many of us, in boxes and different albums and so forth. And you know, to sit down and just look through them could be really, it could be really fun. It could be memorable, but it also has a tinge of sadness in it because you look, that was then, and do you remember that? And we've all grown a bit older. Maybe aren't able to do that now. Maybe it'll never be possible to capture those days again and so forth. But then, of course, we're reminded that we could have said the same back then, couldn't we, about the previous time and previous time. And we have to learn to live where we are because that's where God wants us right now. I can imagine right now people living with this idea even through the coronavirus, can't we? Looking down and saying, kind of sadly, you know, if only, if only a picture... Of, of when finally the lockdown came. If only we had taken that picture two weeks sooner and everybody had locked down then, we'd have saved thousands of lives. There's no question. I mean, in China, they estimate they could have saved 95% of the lost lives if they had locked down two weeks sooner than they did. And we could even say things like, as you look back down in all sorts of ways at different times and events and say, well, if only people had lived as God intended, so many of these diseases would not even afflict the world. You could even say that our world history could be a series of leavings, a series of ever moving on from one sad place to another sad place. Yes, of course, couldn't you? You could look at the whole of the 20th century as one sad event after another after another. You could do the same with the 21st as it's beginning to unfold. And yet, when you look at this chapter, it's more than just a series of sad events, isn't it? It's much, much more. In this account, there are a few moments that are key moments are recorded, and each one of them, I think, is a moment of hope. It begins with the story of the Exodus. It talks about uh, the people moving along the way. It talks about how they set out from the city of Ramesses in the early spring, and the people of Israel left defiantly in full view of the Egyptians while they were burying their firstborn sons, and the Lord had killed that, that he and the Lord had killed the night before, how the Lord had defeated the gods of the Egyptians. And so it begins with a really high point, doesn't it? It talks about the starting point, the exodus from Egypt. It ends with them looking into the promised land, which is the goal, the goal of everything. And then there are three locations on the way. There's Sinai, where the law is given and the covenant established. There's Kadesh, which is the, a key rebellion, a time when God intervened to, to, to establish his rule and authority and, and really speak into people's lives about doing what he asks. And then there's Hor, one place just where Aaron died. And then it finishes with just four or five verses, 50 to 56, with clear warnings not to repeat the rebellion when you enter into the promised land. So when you think about it, leaving could also be seen as moving on to the goal. God is faithful. He was with them the whole time. That's clearly seen as we think about this chapter. And isn't there a sense in which every Christian's life is a story of leavings and moving on? A story of progress. Isn't it true that we all begin our story with an exodus? Yes, well, we put our trust in the redeeming work of Jesus, which is what that exodus really points forward to. The, the lamb that was shed to provide the covering for the people that the angel of death, having passed over, that they would be preserved and God opens up a way for them. And every believer's life begins with the, the God-opened way for us and placing our trust in that. And we are taken out, as it were, into the new life that is promised to us. And so we have a kind of an exodus from our old life or maybe slavery to sin, whatever way you want to look at it. But you're brought into a new place, which is the commencement of a pilgrimage. 
You come to your Sinai because the Holy Spirit now writes the law of God on your heart. And the law of God is good. Contrary to people's uh, responses to it, the psalmist would tell us in the 19th Psalm about how he loves the law of God. And the law of God is, is wonderfully good when you think about it. It is a wonderful safe armco barrier around your life as you journey to keep you in a place of joy and fellowship with God and also with human beings around you. And then, of course, one day we will receive our goal. Yes, the new heavens and the new earth. You see, Jesus has fully dispossessed the enemy. While here in Numbers 33, the people are being told, yes, you must go in and you must dispossess. You mustn't have anything to do with the idols, etc. But we know that Jesus has already disarmed our enemy. He has taken out of his hand any weapon that he can use against us that is eternally effective. And the threat that was hanging over the people as they were thinking of going into the promised land, the threat is taken away from you and I. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ. No condemnation. So that you can look forward to the promised land with a full hope and a great certainty. Isn't that why so much of the New Testament looks with this expectation and Paul talks about that, doesn't he, at the end of his life when he's on the edge or the crest of it and he says, you know, I have finished the race and I've run the race, finished it, fought the good fight of faith and there is now laid up for me the crown of righteousness. Isn't it so good for us to have this? This is our story because Jesus rewrote the story of Numbers. He rewrote the whole thing. He came, he lived it, he rewrote it for you and me so that now you live out of his story and his story is your story and his victory is your victory and his goal will be your goal so i know maybe in the snapshots of life when we look at all the leavings let's not be despondent and let's not despair let's be filled with hope all of those leavings they're fine because they're taking us on to the next step and even in the midst of this coronavirus lockdown and everything else, God has a next step. Believe you me, he has a next step. And the next step that he has is something that we are looking forward to. I don't know what's going to happen after this, but I sure know this, that his hand was on it from the beginning and in the middle, and it will be there in the end. You see, some people think coronavirus is a kind of a mistake that God's chasing after. Not at all. There is nothing that happens in this universe that God does not have a very clear hand in. Oh, he does not willingly afflict the children of men, but he will certainly steer every aspect of this event to further his purposes. His good purposes for his people, his church, his bride, and his glory. And we just pray that many more people will be drawn into the great celebration of that as they come to put their trust in Jesus, the one who's made the way for us. So I hope you can go out into this day. I see it's a bit cloudy and dull this morning, but you know what? Above those clouds, the sun is shining. And above the clouds in your life today, the sun of our Saviour is still celebrating the good things, rejoicing in his child, singing over you, and he's with you. So try and keep your eyes on these things, and may the Lord bless you.